Welcome back to the X-Laser Studio. Uh, in one of the other videos you hopefully just saw, we sort of illustrated some of the differences between compliant and non-compliant laser systems. In this one, we're doing something entirely different, uh, and I, I think it should probably be fun. Uh, basically, what we've done is we've always told people that uh, our, our components come from all, all, all over the world. Uh, we have parts that come from Europe, we have parts that come from Australia, we have parts that come from the United States, and our housings are mass-produced in China, and uh, thus are very much the same as many other housings that are out there in the world. We've always told people this. But what happens is when they go onto like online auction sites and stuff like that, they see things that look substantially similar to ours and go, hmm, that's weird. So basically what we've done is we've actually bought uh, what is almost surely a non-compliant laser system off of a popular online auction site. Uh, it got shipped to us here in a box that looks like it has survived some sort of war. Uh, and uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, break it open, uh, show you what is good, what is not good, and uh, we'll just sort of see together. Now, technically, this laser is supposed to be a 50 milliwatt animation laser system that is or would be similar to our mobile beat system. Uh, it was shipped to us uh, direct from Hong Kong and uh, we will see what it does. Um, we're not holding out a great deal of hope if for absolutely no other reason than this box is <laughs> kind of comically bad. All right, let's see here. Okay, shipped in foam as they normally do. Uh, there's no power cord in the box, which is sort of not a great sign. And there's no manual, but let's unpack this. And before we turn this around and everything, we're going to cover up the brand here just so we don't get sued. Okay, cool. All right. It's live. What are you going to do? All right. So here is our non-compliant laser system uh, that we assume is non-compliant. We're going to grab power and DMX here and see what she does. Okay, we've got power. Power's good, got the fans running and everything. And we're gonna stick in the DMX. Okay, kinda looks like the DMX is maybe not attached. <laughs> Flip this around here for you. So we're just gonna gingerly get that in there. Okay, cool. All right, got that set up. We're going to go ahead and uh, pin one, up the DMX mode, DMX mode, okay, that's all good to go. And I'm going to assume that the DMX traits are the same or similar. Okay, well it doesn't look like it works in DMX mode, uh, I would guess because we have everything on here. So let's try it in auto mode. Uh, we'll go ahead and disconnect the DMX here and we'll do pin 10 down and one and two up. That's not a good sign. Um, okay, it doesn't work. So uh, we're going to, I guess, probably cut to some sort of montage uh, of me taking like a thousand screws out of this case and uh, we'll see if we can figure out why it doesn't work. Uh, but just before I start taking this thing apart, uh, if you want to get a close up of this guy here, you'll notice that there are actually screws missing out of the case. Uh, so, yeah, that's not so good. All right, uh, we're going to take this guy apart and uh, we'll see what's wrong with him. Okay, uh, we have all the case screws taken apart and uh, now we use our poking tool. Uh, to actually pop the lid off here. Okay. All right. 
Well, uh, you can see why the, why the DMX seems to have an issue because it's not really connected to anything. It's just sort of hanging out there. Uh, okay, so looking down inside of this bad boy, uh, it actually looks fairly similar to the mobile bead interior uh, <laughs> with a few key differences. Um, first of all, you'll see this a lot in non-compliant systems that are bought uh, around the world. Let me see if I can, there we go. Uh, this is a refurb diode. This is a diode that was bought somewhere uh, and then was stripped off so that no one could tell where it was bought from or uh, what sort of power it was actually supposed to be putting out. Uh, here's the funny thing though. There's a rather uh, precise alignment procedure that you have to go through to get the diode on the level with the Galvo scanners. Um, and so sometimes you have to tweak it up, tweak it down, whatever. Uh, if you can look in here, it's going to be very small, but maybe you, you can see this, this guy right here. That's a toothpick <laughs> that somebody <laughs> stuck in below the diode uh, <laughs> to jack it up to the level of, of the Galvo. Yeah, yeah, no, that's really a toothpick uh, that somebody uh, stuck in to jack up to the level of the Galvo scanners. Um, okay, all right. This is serious now. All right, uh, why doesn't this thing work? Bunch of connections are just sort of hot glued together here. It's not the end of the world. Oh, you know what? I think I have it figured out. I'm gonna put some power back on here. Turn this bad boy back on. Flip it back into DMX mode. And I bet I turn my DMX up. Hey, there we go. Look at that. You can see uh, the laser has now turned on. Um, okay. Well, problem number one, you see this dot moving back and forward uh, as I turn this knob. This knob is actually supposed to be the zoom knob. Um, and it just seems to be moving one of the Galvos back and forth, which is not so great. Okay, let me flip this guy around and see if I can get the blanking to be right. 